This was Patrice Lumumba in June 1960, the premier of the new Congo Republic, waiting with President Kasavubu to greet King Baudouin of Belgium as the king arrived for the ceremonies that would mark Congolese independence. Less than two weeks in the future lay the army mutiny that would plunge the Congo into near chaos, bring unprecedented United Nations intervention and a nightmare period of crisis, coup, plot and counterplot. The primitive politics and tribal warfare that lay ahead were to prove fertile ground for Soviet agitation. Antoine Gizenga, shown with Lumumba at the UN, is now recognized by the Red Bloc as his political heir. Lumumba's stormy career was checked by Colonel Joseph Mobutu, army strongman, whose forces seized Lumumba at the beginning of December. Public abuse of the controversial figure was followed by his close confinement in Katanga province. As Lumumba's followers raised the threat of civil war, the news came that he had been slain. Upon Lumumba's death, Russia renewed its attack on Dag Hammarskjöld and the United Nations. In Moscow, students demonstrated at the Belgian embassy as the Soviet repeated demands for Hammarskjöld's resignation and called for a withdrawal of all UN troops from the Congo. The red demands were echoed outside the United Nations building by pickets as the Security Council met. The Soviet theme was picked up by African nationalists in demonstrations in most major cities of the world. The focus was New York, where the future of the United Nations lies at stake upon the Congo issue. Hammarskjöld and the World Organization were defended by American Ambassador Adlai Stevenson against what he termed a Russian declaration of war. We believe that the only way to keep the Cold War out of the Congo is to keep the United Nations in the Congo. And we call on the Soviet Union to join us in thus ensuring the free and untrammeled exercise by the Congolese people of their right to independence and to democracy. Mr. President, it is the security of all people which is threatened by this statement and by the proposals of the Soviet government. is interrupted by a well-organized demonstration in the gallery. Most of the group are American Negroes, members of African nationalist groups in New York. It's the most violent demonstration by spectators in the world organization's history. The effect is to underscore the gravity of the Soviet threat. But Hammarskjöld stands firm, refusing to bow to communist pressure. His contention that disaster would result if UN troops leave the Congo is backed both by President Kennedy and by India's neutralist Prime Minister Nehru. As the riot is slowly put down, the stage is set for a test between the free world and the communist bloc, the most critical moment in the 15 years of the United Nations existence. Stevenson's first address in the United Nations, originally planned otherwise, is diverted to defense of the organization itself, now under its heaviest attack. May I say that I deeply deplore this outrageous and obviously organized demonstration to the extent that Americans may have been involved. I apologize on behalf of my government to the members of the Security Council. 